rock and roll is uh, a way of life. It's um, you can't think of it as just a music form. If you're if you live it, you live it. You wake up in the morning, you be brushing your teeth with it, and you go to bed with it next to your pillow at night. So it's uh, it's a lifestyle. The Bon Jovi band is definitely um, a family. Get the hell out of here! Well, we do. Everybody kind of does everything together. <laughs> the only band I've ever been in that gets along as well. We're best friends. Blood, you see. We ain't no verses, I can tell you that right now. Family, family. Plasma. a newspaper a magazine article a while ago John that you were tired of your long hair that you know didn't signify what it used to if signify you're going to cut it all off Are it's possible uh, you know I mean cool cut. see my dad cut hair for a living when I was a kid so after you get your ass whooped he'd cut your hair which was like the worst thing in the world so now you'll see my brothers and I all have long hair basically because we're all older and bigger than he is you know <laughs> Well, I mean, like the Beastie Boys have uh, in their riders, you know, they have a, a safe condom rider, safe sex rider. They have to have condoms in the back of their dressing rooms. Do you guys have anything uh, like that? Did you yeah, stick with that? The Beastie Boys have influenced a lot of what I do, too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Next. Listen, are you engaged? That's the hot rumor. This is the way I look at it. Marriage is an institution, and I'm much too young to go to an institution. That's right. <laughs> I wanted to know if you're going to continue to use the pizza parlor jury when you record your next uh, album. The pizza parlor oh. jury. That's cool. It's cool oh, for oh, oh, the name of the album. <laughs> it's the pizza parlor Could you jury. just explain that maybe for some people here that might not know what that is? In, uh, in Sarahville, New Jersey, was a small recording studio that nobody knew existed. Right around the block from there was a, a, a local pizza parlor milk store and like maybe a dry cleaners or something but the kids would hang out there and we were right around the block rehearsing and writing all the material for this album and finally we went over there and, and uh, invited them all back into the studio with us and so there was 30 kids that really picked the material for this album and songs like never say goodbye which we never released as a single yet people liked or, or wild in the streets which is another fun live song would have never made the album had it not been for the pizza pie jury <laughs> and uh, probably uh, I'll tell you that was probably the smartest thing we ever did Now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chief, come, <coughs> come with me. <laughs> Are you showering now, man? Or I later? gotta go shower. Yeah, before I shower, this could be the most important thing. Alcohol. Please, folks, don't try this at home. It's only for professionals. You must understand this. Never drive while you're on stage. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Gus. 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 <laughs> the rumor has it that we have our own plane. You've heard these things, you've seen them on TV. This, this is, is it. Bon Jovi play. <laughs> Look. Brain claw. <laughs> Yo, Holmes. This is Mr. Sweet William. Mr. Sweet William Gear, man, he does security for Bon Jovi. This man, security coordinator. What do you have to say about it, Bill? We secure, baby. We secure. Are we secure here in the Tokyo Budokan? We secure, baby. We well, secure. Now, it's off to the showers. Quasimodo. I must go to with him wherever he goes. <laughs> Godzilla. Godzilla movie. Ah! Oh, of course, it's the Bon Jovi play. But it's still fly. I don't know. Hi. Can I call you? Sure. I woke up one morning. I said, 
to myself. I said to myself. Self. What a great day for rock and roll. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Isn't this wonderful? <laughs> this here is Gary. Gary. This is Gary. Hi there. This is a guy that takes care of me and all my shit. All this shit. <laughs> Very important man to all me. <laughs> is that we're not the show but the kids are the show we're just the host of the party kind of thing you know like and we have a good time with each other you know when we play rock and roll on stage together man we have a good time man we look at each other and we're happy to be there you know we're happy to play with each other there you know so it's so and then the kids come in and they see that the band is happy and the hosts are having a good time at the party so they're gonna have a good time Yeah, I think uh, Bad Name was my favorite. Bad yeah. Name? Yeah. It's because it was the, f I mean, the first real video we ever did. And uh, it just showed the energy, particularly the band, like we are. Sort of like the Blues Brothers, but I'm, I'm you know, only half blues. <laughs> The other half of me is, is, is white toast, but that's okay, I'm, I'm learning about this thing. Basically, I thought, if we sold a million records, I'd be the happiest kid on earth and I could get off the ball. But, um, it's been a dream come true now, 12 million records. That's pretty, pretty amazing. Well, actually, we only sold 2 million records and my mom bought 10 million records, so. Doc McGee, Doc, uh, he manages this band. Doc's an imposter. He is the guru of rock and roll. The man behind the plan. A voice on a telephone. Oh, wait, here he is right now. Excuse me. Hello. Okay, uh, well, I'm in an interview right now, Doc. Wait, hold on a minute, okay? See, Doc, this is like Charlie's Angels. You know, like on Charlie's Angels, you never knew who Charlie was, but they got all the commands? That's Doc. I know that I would still be back at Kinney's had it not been, you know, for the team of me and Doc, because, uh, you know, we're, we're best friends, you know, and that's what made it work. Well, okay, go ahead. For you at home, go up to your TV and scratch it. This is a scratch and sniff portion, which you will be sick in about a minute. <laughs> bon Jovi's a family. Um, we've been doing this now for four and a half years straight. And it's like your brothers, you know? It's like everybody's, you wake up with each other, you see, you see your brother every day, and you know, it's like, it's like a family, you know, so. The crew, gotta thank them. Uh, you figure there's, you know, I mean, literally, sometimes hundreds of people working behind the scenes to put a show on. And uh, starts at 6 in the morning and ends 3 or 4 the next morning, and then they have to not only cart the stuff to another place, but just do it over and over again. It's pretty strenuous. Uh, it's almost melancholy, you know. It's, uh, the road is exactly... Uh, the road. We have the best people working for us. I mean, we just do. It's just a real bunch of characters. I mean, they're they're the mighty men, the men who who put it all yeah. together, which you don't really see. And if it wasn't for them, what? we'd still be doing it because we hire other people. <laughs> Richie Bozet, who's our road manager, you know, he's like anyone else, giving up everything and everything to be a member of the band. And uh, you know, without Richie, that that we wouldn't be anywhere. <laughs> Especially on time. This is a, a Japanese doll of John Bon Jovi with his famous jean jacket this year, Levi's actually. 
This is, this is possibly Richie Sambora. Let me see. Yeah, that's Richie. Who is this? Oh, God. I don't know. Who is that? <laughs> Wrong band. It's true. We have Reg. Reggie Cray, or you might want to call him Danny Francis, or you may want to call him a Robert Bach. Danny Francis is the chief of security. And he's gotten to a point where he's lied to us so much over the last 16 months. I haven't got a clue what his name is. He makes me pay him in cash, so I don't, you know, I don't have a clue about this guy. Yeah, he's got a few names, a few aliases. Is this the stupidest thing you've ever seen? Uh, Spanky, our wardrobe girl, the best. You gotta help me sew. If you're gonna help me sew, you can stay. She's sort of like your sister and your mother and your girlfriend and, and your best pal all rolled up into one. And uh, Spank makes sure that, that our clothes don't stink as much as they used to. Uh, they just stink a little bit now. Paco uh, likes to give us a hard time every once in a while. He was a tour accountant for God. Well, Paco makes sure that, that we have money. Do we have any money, Pac? Eight bucks. OK. <laughs> the American dream. The American dream. I, I used to sell ladies' shoes. I sold, I sold magazines door to door. What can I say? I used to make up dinette sets. Still trying to explain to me actually what he does for a living, and uh, I, I can't figure that out yet. And Steve Lemon is the guy that climbs up in the ceiling and hooks all that stuff up there. He's called a rigger. If you don't know what a rigger is, uh, Steve isn't afraid to walk the wire, you know? He'll walk on a wire. Steve Lemon was the sole reason, I, I have to say, and the reason that uh, Captain Kidd can fly. We're just gonna have fun. This would that's what Bon Jovi's about. We're more or less uh, you know, peep, there's a band that they have, you know, political, you know, overtones and things like that. And uh, I don't think we're really gonna get into that. We're just a a good American rock and roll band, you know, and we like to work and we like to get out and play live and that's what Bon Jovi's basically all about. Oh, uh, my favorite video. I don't know, I think I'm I, I would have to say like in twenty years from now if I ever uh get married and had a kid, and he says, well, what have you done with your life? I would say this, and I, I, I'd probably play him Wanted. And uh, he'd probably look at me and think I was one of those old-time rock and rollers, you know? But uh, then I'd slap him. <laughs> wanted. I mean, it sounds like something you get at a podium, but it's true. I mean, without everybody, we couldn't have done it. And uh, I want to thank you all. Appreciate it. I guess most important, you guys because you were there when they said that Bon Jovi wasn't gonna happen. You were there when they said that we were a fluke. You kept coming back for more and telling the critics and all the authority, whoever they are out there, no. <laughs> so to our fans, thank you. <laughs>